looking to make a lab redesign, but not sure where to start? You're in the right place. In this video, a lab refers not only to the in-class portion, but to the entire span of lab activities from pre-lab prep to post-lab write-up. Together, we will go over the goals of labs, inquiry-based teaching strategies, and approaches to the five phases of inquiry. The goals of labs. When redesigning a lab, one of the first things to consider is why this lab is being done. A common mistake in lab design is emphasizing the creation of a final product over the learning process or learning objectives of the student. It is therefore important to redesign on an experiment by experiment basis, focusing on the student's actions and learning. The goals of labs can loosely be grouped into these three areas. Doing skills, hands-on manipulation of equipment, as well as the procedural aspects. Knowledge and thinking skills, including scientific inquiry and disciplinary knowledge. And professional skills, skills that are not content specific, such as teamwork and communication. While disciplinary knowledge tends to be the focus of course activities, labs provide a unique space to develop these other skills. Okay, we understand that for a lab to be successful, the student's actions and learning must be taken into account. Let's now see how inquiry-based teaching strategies in labs improve students' learning outcomes. Labs are an important opportunity for students to develop their scientific decision-making skills. In practice, this strategy emphasizes students taking an active role with respect to the direction of the lab rather than passively following a lab manual. By using this approach, students' skill development is enhanced. Research into inquiry-based labs, instead of traditional lab practices, has shown that inquiry-based learning can increase engagement, develop higher-order thinking skills, and improve learning outcomes. For example, let's consider the following interaction between a student and a TA. When the student asks, why do we have to do step five? In a traditional lab scenario, the TA's answer could be, look at page three of the lab manual for more details, but we do this to reduce sources of error. In an inquiry-based scenario, the TA's answer could be, it's interesting that you brought this up. How do you think this step relates to the variables we're investigating? With the inquiry scenario, the TA is helping the student with more than just the final product of this lab. By using questions, the TA creates opportunities for the student to develop their scientific thinking skills. This shift may seem subtle, but it can lead to improved student learning outcomes and enhanced teaching effectiveness. Our goal is for students to understand that being a scientist doesn't necessarily mean knowing, but rather it means knowing how to think. Approaches to five phases of inquiry. To move towards more inquiry-based teaching into the lab, we should consider five phases of inquiry, which span the full arc of student activities from pre-lab prep to post-lab write-up. Orientation, where a purpose or problem statement is introduced. Conceptualization, where hypotheses and investigation methods are developed. Investigation, where experiments are conducted and data is collected. Evaluation, where analysis occurs and conclusions are made. And discussion, where outcomes are communicated and reflected upon. There are close connections between the five phases, and performing the lab can involve iterative loops rather than a direct line. Thinking about your own lab, at which steps do your students make decisions that determine the direction of the lab? Let's consider what traditional and inquiry-based strategies look like for each phase. In orientation, a traditional lab has students read the purpose of the lab, whereas an inquiry lab provides students with a meaningful scenario or question that contextualizes the lab's purpose. In conceptualization, a traditional lab tells students the hypothesis and methods. Inquiry labs may have students generate their own hypothesis critique a given protocol, or design their own procedure. 
in investigation, a traditional lab has students investigate and collect data as instructed. An inquiry lab involves student troubleshooting, identifying sources of bias and determining what data should be collected. In evaluation, traditional labs assign calculations and comparisons to be made. An inquiry lab has students determine the analysis methods, critically examine findings, and discuss limitations. In discussion, traditional labs have students write a lab report for their teacher or TA. Inquiry labs can involve student communication in a range of formats to a range of audiences. In the inquiry approach, the focus of each phase is developing students' scientific thinking skills. We can implement inquiry-based teaching in labs by including some or all the inquiry phases. Students that have not taken an active role in the past may struggle if given too much independence at once. To help students adjust, structure the course so that students have an increasingly autonomous role over the semester or as they progress through their program. In summary, labs should be more than content knowledge or producing a product. Labs can develop students' autonomy, their scientific decision-making skills, and their ability to work and communicate with others. These skills are what students take with them when they leave the lab, while the product only has a temporary value. Inquiry-based teaching methods are a research-supported way to develop students' skills and improve students' learning outcomes.